not just the one box that you all know and love. I just want to say happy Easter to some of my friends here before we get started here. Get Jeffrey Boyle here in the chat. Give you a round of applause. Hello, Jeffrey. Happy Easter to you. I didn't bring my bunny ears today because I don't have them, but uh, <laughs> I thought it might have been a good idea. Death Cult. Good morning. Happy Easter. All right. I love that guitar. It looks like a like an Ibanez Destroyer. Or it's probably Gibson Explorer. One of those. But love it nonetheless. Excellent guitar. Hello, Paul. It's beer o'clock somewhere. I know that, but I have my coffee still right here. But it'll be nice. And uh, yeah, thanks for spending some time here on Easter Sunday with me. We got a good one. We got some. Uh... Some of your favorites scales and licks right here. This is going to be uh, a little bit different than what I normally do. And this is going to be really cool. Hello, Rajesh. Very good to see you. Going good. Round of applause. Yeah, can we leave early? Yeah, it's not gonna be a long one today. Probably do like half hour or so. And we'll we'll get out. We'll we'll gather some Easter eggs here today. You know, do our thing. We're doing E minor pentatonic, and the five shapes that we have right here. Let me switch over to this other camera, and I'll show you. I'll start with the, the first one, right here, that we all know, and we all love. It's this um, E minor shape right here. We'll do it open. We can do it up here in the 12th fret. But a lot of times we, you know, we get stuck playing in this shape right here. And it's cool, but you're, you're up here and you're down here. this room in here and in my opinion it sounds better I mean there's sweeter spots on the guitar than open here and here especially when you're playing the E note somewhere like here listen to what you get you know you have this let's uh, hope you can hear that okay Well, the temper of this E is going to be much different than this one. So why play this octave E here when you have this one? Listen to the temper of that. different timbers and sounds to them so I think it's it's really worth investigating and playing in all those different positions right there which we're gonna get to in one second eggs have E and relative <laughs> eggs have E and relative major G. I thought you were getting into some kind of a vitamin thing here <laughs> um, eggs have E and relative major G yeah we're gonna do that too which is really cool we're gonna get to the relative Relative G. We'll tune. We'll tune for that, specifically for that. But uh, yeah, happy Easter. E minor for Easter. That's so cool. That's funny. E minor Easter. Tune for, for your pleasure, real quick. Temperature changes in the room. It's Easter. You know, what are you going to do? It's live. I'm close enough. Ah, there we go. 
So, all right. Hit that like button if you're having a good time so far. Give you a round of applause for that. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. And uh, let's go back over to here. It's a camera. Okay, so that is the first pentatonic shape that we all know and love right there. <laughs> track here that I created, a little loop, sounds like this, check it out, it's just an E minor. With my little uh, RC5 loop station. You can play all through here, this, the shape. A little delay on. Watch my fingering here. I'm playing like you're supposed to, really. The fingering's right here. Is that important? No, not really. I mean, this shape fits really good for that. But you could break out. You don't have to play your, use your pinky here. Use this finger. Use this finger. Whatever you want to do. reason why I emphasize that is because there is a benefit to doing the proper fingerings here. It helps with technique. Your, um, yeah, technique is important here where it strengthens your technique, strengthens your fingers so that you're using all your fingers here. Got that now check this out let's go over to um close that out bring up the second shape right here we'll do that one second let's see what's going on here with you guys in the chat breaking out of the box is very worthy and awesome way to expand tonality isn't that the truth definitely a great thing to break out of the box and um expand tonality because the guitar it just sounds different everywhere you know especially if you're recording sometimes you want to play something in a spot and go you know it's not really works so you just bring the same lick to a different spot could help too if you're if you're playing a gig and you break a string it's nice to be able to know you know where you are in different spots on the guitar like uh check this out for this shape right here this is the second shape of the pentatonic boxes right here and it starts on on G you could look at it as like a G pentatonic scale oops and what I was talking about before was the fingerings here it's a little bit awkward you know, these shapes right here, you know, it's like to play through it like this. It's like, use these fingerings. But we're really going to focus on the E minor here, not necessarily the relative G major. So I would find the E minor within this pattern. So where is E minor in here? We got the G, A, B, D, E. Sounds like a song, doesn't it? Sounds like a Pink Floyd song. <laughs> we won't do that. We don't, we don't want any copyright claims over here today on Easter. So here's E. Here's E. So we could play here in E like this. 
instead of this way, which sounds different because you're playing the E. Of course, it's the same E, but the G is open. The A is here, open G here. It sounds a little tight here because you're fretting it. So within this pattern, this position right here, I'm finding you have that lick in there. You have the open E with that G. There's licks and riffs in each position that you won't necessarily play in different positions. Like stuff like, yeah, you could do it here. It's just different, it sounds different up here. Let's put on that track and see if we can have some fun with that. And um, I don't have this, this is the loop that I just created on my RC5 looper. So hopefully you have a way of just getting a, an E minor backing track here for yourself. If you can't, then I'll, I'll whip up something for you. Just uh, send me an email, info Jerry Cherry, say you want to eat this E minor backing track and I could whip that up. So you could have a, as much fun as I am right here doing this. Hopefully you have your guitars out and you're just jamming along with me. Cool E minor progression. I'm playing this second position right here. say real quick is that it's important to practice the correct fingerings and then it's important to not practice the correct fingerings Mazingo what's happening happy Easter to you give you a round of applause how's those picks coming along Mazingo has some guitar picks Looks like a pick on your profile right there too, which looks pretty cool. But it's cool to learn these shapes in these fingerings because it strengthens your fingers. It gives you good technique. and allows you to play certain things that you can't play otherwise. See, look, it's already set up to do certain riffs. You have this E minor arpeggio here. I know sometimes you want to use what, you know, your fingers want to do naturally, like bend. You wouldn't want to like bend with your, this finger pointing. Although you could. But if your life depended on it and you had a choice to bend with what makes, you know, what's comfortable for you. I would do this. I would use my three fingers and I wouldn't really depend on doing with just the one pointer finger, I mean, or this, um, my middle finger. So, and it goes for all the, the notes in this position. You know. I would go up to here like this. Naturally, I would just go. I would switch my my pointer and my ring finger. But the positions want you to use these fingers. And it's really beneficial because you're strengthening these fingers. Look, you're using these two. Doing stuff that normally do. I mean, you could play all day like with the string, with the fingers that you're really good with, which is probably your pointer and your ring finger. Right? But use these two, your ring, your middle finger and your pinky. 
Yeah, so I think um, definitely has benefits to using these fingers in these positions because you'll you'll see that there's certain riffs that you'll naturally start playing. You might even go. You know, because your fingers are already here, right? You're hitting an E chord. You probably hit this chord all the time. So right now you're in that position. So why change? But at the end of the day, it really depends on what sounds good. So hopefully you're here with me so far. It's Easter. We're having a good time. We're playing guitar. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. We love the Easter bunny around here. <laughs> We're having some coffee. My Jerry Cherry mug. We're wearing like a cool t-shirt today, right? Who Name this band. Who is this? Who is this on my shirt? And don't say the Beatles. We want to know who that is. It's a very old shirt, but I just love it. It's comfortable. It's my color. And it's a good band. What is it, uh? Something like that, right? All right. So let's go back. Who? I don't know. It's a good question. That is a very good question. <laughs> Rajesh. <laughs> yep. Well, you know. I don't know. Yes. Yes? That's not yes. No. Who? Yes. <sighs> <laughs> Who's on first? What chord shape goes with each position? Oh, that is a good question, too. That's a good question. Done. We're well, going back to where we are already on the camera. Cam 2. We're on this right here, right? So, you know, this really, I would say, right, for E minor, E minor, it's right here. It's the D shape for this position. Because you have your, your D right here. For the G, it would be the G shape right here. The G shape. Actually, it might be the, um, the E shape G. But not to get too confusing on this, I think um, for this position right here, if I was to name a, a, a chord shape that goes in here, it would be the D shape. Because you look, here's the D shape. Well, if, like this is a D shape right there, right? But it's a D minor shape, and that's right. And we're talking about E minor, so the E minor. Here's the lower extension of it. The E, the fifth, the minor, the third. guitar in tune we'll get there like uh, my old guitar teacher who I took six lessons from Teddy Kumpel most most amazing guitar player on the planet Teddy Kumpel check him out talking about tuning he told me something very wise but it might not really make too much sense here live because he just said keep tuning until you're in tune <laughs> <laughs> Just keep tuning. Eventually, you'll be in tune. So yeah, you got the E minor extension here. Right there. Like that. All right. Who are we talking about? 
Oh, the guitar player, Teddy Kumpel. If you want to know, Teddy, T-E-D-D-Y, Teddy Kumpel. Kumpel, K-U-M-P-L-E. Excuse me. Check him out. Great, great, great guitar player. Plays with Joe Jackson, by the way, too. Who's, you know, the famous, amazing Joe Jackson, piano player, singer, songwriter. And um, so this position right here, let's try it along with the loop here. Oops. Pretty cool riff you could do here. Can't do that anywhere else except here. You can go. You're already down here. The cool thing about this over just the E static E minor chord is that you could just land on any note really, and it sounds good. I'm just got here's the E. can't sit on too long is that fourth degree. It wants to resolve. It's more of like a leading. That's a fun one. It's a really good position. Let's go over, let's cut this one out and go to the third position right here. No, that's, that's not the one. We'll find it. Okay. We have third position right here. This is a fun one. I think you're going to enjoy that. We're, we're talking about different positions here that you might enjoy. <laughs> It's not that kind of live special, folks. It's a family, you know. It's a family affair. It's a family affair. <laughs> it's got the B and G strings are troublesome with Les Pauls. Oh, typically keep them in tune. Yeah, stupid things. You can never get it. Just the way the guitar is even designed, you know. That's why they have those, um, what do they call it? Those weird frets and the temperament tunings. I'd say this guitar is very temperamental. <laughs> Much like its owner. So, um, yeah, thanks for the surprise. These are expensive guitars. Yeah, if you talk about the Les Paul, it doesn't matter how expensive a guitar is, it's still going to have like wacky tuning things very minor irritation of that juicy Les Paul tone in my opinion 
very minor irritation to have that juicy Les Paul tone. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's definitely uh, something special. With the Les Paul, right? It's got that... Sparkle right there that I just love. I just gotta go nuts and uh, just forget about it. Sly Sloan. What does that even mean, Rajesh? Sly Sloan. Is that for Sylvester Stallone? Sly Sloan. Looking for crossroads. Hey, made it. So good to see you. Give you a round of applause. It's happy Easter to you. We're not gonna go super, super long. I guess that's what we. I said, but we're going. We're just going. Sweet and tunings. Oh, Scott. Yeah, you know, I have a couple of Peterson tuners. I'm using the the foot switch right now. I mean, the the floor one. Yep. It must be an ambulance or a fire truck or a cop. I don't know if you could hear that. Um, and I have it on the Sweeten setting. Works pretty good. I haven't really looked too much into see, seeing what it's doing. Actually, it's pretty cool though. And uh, Osman, hope Easter is cooking up those storms, hoping up, hoping everyone has a great day. I have to check this lesson out later. Okay, Osman, sounds good, Frank. Cooking up a storm. I got you. I'm a little dyslexic. Today I had a late night gig last night over in um in and where was it? In New Jersey, deep into New Jersey, definitely like three, three and a half hours away from here in Brooklyn, but it was out there. It was fun. I'm still waking up. Les Paul telecasts are the, are the shh, shh. <laughs> oh, family affair, duh. Slice down the family. It's a family affair. And I haven't really been using my telly too much, but I'm going to break that out really soon. Don't you worry about that. Don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about the telly. So you got this position right here. This is one of my, my favorite ones right here because you have that... That uh, check it out. You have a starting on the A note. So weird, isn't it? Look at the um, the shape of it. All right, Tom G. I'll see you around for sure. Happy Easter to you. Where's the E right here in this shape? Well, you have starting on the, it's all the same five notes recycled all over again. So you have the A, again, the B, the C, I mean the, the A, B, the D, and the E. So you have the E right here. Then you have your G, A, B, D, E. E right here. So you have cool licks in here like, like So you're taking what you had down here already on this E, right? This open E. It's the same type of lick. But check it out up here. Sounds a little different though, doesn't it? Than here. I mean, if I was recording and I needed like a, a beefier. I need a beefier. Lick. I might do it here.
Timber is so much different right there in this position. You have licks like, like this. That's pretty cool. This one right here. Check it out, let's mess around with it a little bit in here. With these positions. all cool stuff you know I'm out of the box I'm out of my out of here where everybody plays and I'm playing over here right in the heart right in the beefy part of the guitar neck right where it's the thickest I mean, I think maybe even up here, and we'll get to in a second. All right, hopefully, hopefully everyone's doing pretty good. I know Osman had to split, but we'll go a little bit longer here. We got another couple of positions here to get to. Thanks, Jeffrey. The smiley face right there. All right. Yep. Start driving. See you sometime tomorrow. Thank you so much. Meatloaf. Mm, that sounds delicious. It's like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. What's on the menu tonight? Meatloaf? <laughs> All right. So that's a great position. And um, let's see. We'll go over to Cam 2. And let's see. We have this fourth position. There's five positions. This one's pretty cool, too. Actually, one, one thing I didn't say was... Um, is on the, I guess going back to, I think Scott had mentioned this to me before too, that uh, I could see this. So the position, this one, yeah, we had the E minor chord shape inside there. On this one, we were just rocking out too. I would say, because you're right here in this shape, You have the C chord shape right here. Just like a C position, right? Just like your C chord. Right here. But if it was minor, if you slide up the C all the way to here, to E, right? You have E major. You have to take the same chord here. And you slide it all the way up. Made it minor. <laughs> That's where you have the E minor chord shape. So you have. Right 
All right, and then going up to this next one, in this fourth shape, you have. Pretty cool shape right here, too. I think Scott Olson had told me that this um, was his, his favorite shape, the fourth position right here. <clears throat> We're still here, Scott. I think you're, you're still hanging out. Really, really cool position right here because you have the, um, the E here. And it's a really tight sounding position right here. Really enjoy this one. from but we have uh, hand pink waving okay I got you is that what it says hand pink or chand pink waving? I don't know I don't know but I'll give you a round of applause for that whatever that means <laughs> I see what is your name you translate it for us a little bit I appreciate that Paul Merrill always laughing it's because it's beer clock somewhere Right. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. All right. So we have, um, okay, this position is fourth position right here. One of my faves. Look where the E is right here. You have that open E. And it's really, I would call it an A shape right here. Because you have that E minor. It's right in here in the E minor that you play all the time. As a matter of fact, it's what this rhythm is right here. That's what I'm playing. I made it right here. So I'm not really bending the third like in a blues context. Which is why I like this. It's a real minor. I'm sitting on that minor third. I'm not bending it up to a major third, obviously. You could shake it up a little, though. So I'm bending up a little bit, because it's almost want to. You have this bend to the fifth here. Double stop here. You take the D note, which is the seventh degree, and you take the, the fourth and bend it up to the fifth. And I'm doing like a hybrid picking thing. I'm, it sounds a little smoother. I'm plucking this note, and I'm plucking this with the pick. Instead of just hitting both of them, it gives me a little more control.
<laughs> We're having some fun. Robin Travel. Robin Trower? Trowel? Robin Trower? Is that what you're trying to spit out, or is it some other guy? Robin Trowel. But I don't know. Scott, still here. Awesome. Noodling in E minor. Third position. You like that third. I knew you like you said you like the fourth position, which is this one. In a blues context, you could take that. Which I like. But we're staying E minor here. E minor. Keeping it keeping it sad. So I have one more position right here. And uh where is it? Get right to it. I'm trying to see so far away. So far away from not like married to myself album cover. Um where the heck is it? Oh, I know what's happening here. Oh, it's down here. That's why. All right. Fifth position right here. Really cool. We'll get to this. Just one sec. Just want to say hello to you. Get a drink of water. Hopefully you're having a good time. You're, you're with me here so far. I know Scott Olson's jamming in E minor along with me in the third position. We're in the fifth one right now. So you better catch up. And when we finish this one last one right here we're going to do like just a few minutes of the major one major pentatonic which is the same exact positions only over a g chord that's gonna be a lot of fun but we'll just do this last one right here and uh we'll get moving on this position's really cool if you don't really play in this one you should be because it's really right behind where you know and love you know this one you know and love this one but right behind it you have this really symmetrical shape. Check out symmetrical. It's like two frets down, two frets down, three frets down, three frets down, two, two, two. So it's all on the same. You have all these notes, right? Then you go. These are all the same shapes. Check it out. two in the middle are the same. So you have all these, pent these symmetrical things you could do, like... I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but, <laughs> but it's fun. It's, it's symmetrical. And if you were to play it together with this position, you could do like Eddie Van Halen, what he does. He plays a lot of that stuff where he's playing in two positions at the same time. So he'll go and do stuff like, like and stuff like that, and, uh, and then drop it down here. I digress. I'm getting out of what I'm trying to say right here. But let's find where, where's the E here? What's well, the second note up here? You have the E. You have the E right here. And you have the E here. And it's good to use the right fingerings here because there's a couple of cool things you could do in here. As far as fingerings go. You have this E minor chord shape here, which is really, it's a G shape. Right on the G string would be a G chord, which would be like this G chord, like this. Slide it all the way up to E, to E here. But it's E minor. So it'd be an E shape chord here. You have that riff. You have this cool riff right here, which is like a... You don't really have that anywhere else, this accessible, which you're bending the fourth again. 
hitting the seventh. jam here you go let's play along with this track We did. Went through all five. Really cool. You have to go. It's hard to put down the guitar. Family awaits. All right. I totally get it. It's actually perfect timing. We're, we're right about there. I didn't really get into too much of the to the major. We'll do like just a piece of this. But I have um. If we go back to to the um, where was it? This first shape right here. And E. We'll close this one out. We'll go right to this first one right here. So you're you're aware it's the E minor that we did. But it's also G. We start on the G note. You have this. It's the same progression, but it's with a G chord. And now it's happy. Positions like this second position right here. Go through this real quick. Here's the third position. I think I knocked out of tune somehow. You get the idea in the major sense. Yeah. We have this one. In this position. 
same shape as before. So we're focusing on the G note. And the same thing over here. <laughs> I did that on purpose. Minor shape position. Down to major third. had a good time. I hope you had a good time. On this Easter Sunday, Cherry Sunday, Scott likes the fourth, but it's stuck in the third. <laughs> hey, it's better than being stuck in one. You have five options here. And I hope I kind of explained it in a fun way, in an understandable way. We can just get around. And the real cool thing about these two is once you do like a progression, like a blues progression, when it goes to like the four chord to the A, you know, you may wind up, you may be playing in this area of E minor pentatonic right here in this third position. It goes to A, and you're right here in A. Back to E in the fourth position, or third. Good stuff. All right. Well, thanks for spending some time here with me on Easter. We're having a great time. Went a little bit long, probably, for Easter. But uh, really appreciate spending the time. And if you made it all the way here to the end, I'll just mention that I do have a... Would it be right here? I do have a guitar course. No, that's my Facebook channel, which you should check out as well. <laughs> the course is right here. And uh, where is the picture of it? I don't even know. I'm freaking out over here. It's Easter. I don't know where I'm, of my graphics are. Here, I know I have them somewhere. Look, this is what you call a, uh, a complete breakdown of graphics, and they're they're gone. I had um I had graphics here. They're no longer here anymore. I don't know why. But, um, oh well, we'll figure it out another time. I do have a course, by the way, it's called the Essential Skills Collection for Guitar. And if you check it out at my, um, right here in the description, you'll see a link there, it takes you over there. It focuses on some cool stuff like fretboard memorization, the blues, in-depth blues with backing tracks, and um, 
and the circle of fifths, which is so important in figuring out how music works and chord progressions. So if you have any questions about any of this stuff, please let me know. I'm going to wrap it up here in a minute. Thanks so much, Scott Olson, for hanging out here with me today. I'll give you guys a round of applause. Any questions about any of this stuff or any ideas for future lessons, let me know in the comments section or email me at info with Jerry Cherry. You guys are awesome. Paul, thanks for spending some time here with me today. And um, with the, uh, the hand pink waving, thank you very much for hanging out here. Rajesh, really, really cool. Frank, Jeffrey Boyle, Osman, everyone who was here, spent a little time. I had to rush out to to wherever it is they're going with the family, with Easter today in church or whatever you do on Easter Sunday, Tom G. And uh, thank you. I'm looking for Crossroads hanging out with us today. Really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. And um, really, really means a lot to me. So enjoy. Roger Charlie. What's happening? You just caught the very end. We're wrapping it up. But go back and watch some of this video. It's, it's a lot of fun. We had a good time today on Easter Sunday. Thanks for checking in with us, Roger. Very, very cool of you. Spent some time with us here today. But, um, yeah. So remember, guys, on Easter, be cool, be kind, and be cherry. And if you want to see a really good, simple video about the pentatonic positions and the five steps of, of the pentatonic position of five positions... Check out the video right up there, and I'll see you in the next one. Love you guys. Happy Easter.